In the previous 7th and 8th episodes, we have seen the twofold means of Chitta Vritti Nirodha, namely Abhyasa and Vairagya, the result of which is to remain steadfast in the state of Yoga, that is nothing but Samadhi, and concluded the 8th episode with a question on the nature of Samadhi. Please remember, we also have discussed in detail the words yoga and samadhi in the third episode hence in this episode we shall learn in detail the nature of samadhi there are two kinds of samadhi otherwise two levels for the state of samadhi namely sampratnyata samadhi and Asampratnyata Samadhi. In a sense, this categorization is based on the intensity of the state of Samadhi. Please note that Samadhi is a conscious state. Therefore, in the first level called Sampratnyata Samadhi, the yogi is conscious, though reasoning, discrimination, bliss and the sense of being or the sense of I remain. Whereas, in Asampratnyata Samadhi, the yogi reaches the highest state of Samadhi wherein only the subtle impressions remain. Let us learn them as explained by the sage Patanjali in the following two sutras. Vitar. At first, let us learn the Sampratnyata Samadhi. Thus, Vitarka vicharananda smita rupa anugamat sampratnyata. In brief, it means that sampratnyata samadhi is a deep and objective meditative state, or better say, there is a focal point, and therefore he is accompanied by reasoning, discrimination, bliss, and the sense of I am. As usual, let us see the constituents of this sutram. Vitarka vicharananda smita rupanugamat and sampratnyata are the two words in it. Among these, vitarka vicharananda smita rupanugamat is a compound of vitarka, vichara, ananda, asmita, Rupa, Anugamat, and then Sampratnyata. Vitarka means reasoning. Vichara means discriminative thought process. Ananda means bliss. Asmita means the sense of I. Rupa means form or shape or figure or assumption, etc. Anugama means following or accompanying and so on. Anugamat is its ablative case that presently means because of being accompanied. Among these, the last two words Rupa and Anugamat together as Rupa Anugamat will be repeated along with the rest of the words to bring out a complete meaning such as Vitarka Rupanugamat, meaning because of being accompanied by reasoning. And then Vichara Rupanugamat, and that means because of being accompanied by discrimination. And then Ananda Rupanugamat, meaning because of being accompanied by bliss. And Asmita Rupanugamat, because of being accompanied by the sense of. I. It is called Sampratnyata Samadhi. Here, there is an easy way of referring to these by adding the prefix Sa to replace Rupanugamat, and meaning will remain the same, such as Vitarka Rupanugamat can be Savitarka, and Vichara Rupanugamat can be Savichara, Ananda Rupanugamat can be Sananda and Asmita Rupanugamat can be Sasmita. 
all these are characteristics of sambhrajnata samadhi which is the primary level in samadhi in the word sambhrajnata sam and pra are two prefixes together they mean perfectly complete in this context and the word nyata is the past participle of the verb nya which means avabodhana or knowing hence the word sambhrajnata means distinguished or discerned or known accurately this suggests the primary level in samadhi or a conscious state at which the mind remains withdrawn from the senses and no more perceptions are allowed in so sambhrajnata samadhi is the collective name that expresses the gross form of the samadhi achieved gradually through four stages such as savitarka or characterized by reasoning savichara characterized by discrimination sananda characterized by blissfulness and sasmita characterized by the sense of i let us see each of these components in further detail beginning with savitarka before beginning savitarka for ease of reference hereafter let us call the practitioner of yoga as yogi so in savitarka the yogi contemplates on the gross material world sometimes a specific object of contemplation and its constituents the gross five elements and the five senses that act as tools to perceive these elements as this contemplation deepens the yogi identifies himself inseparably one with the world as a result of understanding that the physical body is nothing but the distribution of the same five elements in certain proportion and everything available here in our mundane or temporal or ephemeral world that can be perceived through the sense organs are manifestations of the same primordial elements and the world manifests through myriads of mutations and permutations of the same primordial elements these elements come into being exist then undergo changes in the form of growth and decay and finally return to the primeval form similarly our physical body is made up of the same transient materials and our senses are nothing but tools to perceive this material world this vitarka or reasoning brings in clarity of vision which ultimately leads to the cessation of the same vitarka or reasoning this stage is called nirvitarka where the traces of reasoning are left behind and hereafter starts savichara or discriminating what you are and what you are not it is like penetrating to the core from the outer shell because the deeper the thought the focus shifts from the gross to the subtle so as the yogi moves from savitarka to nirvitarka and from there to savichara where the thought process or the focus of contemplation shifts from the gross to the subtle elements that permeates every material manifestation and the internal organs of knowledge such as the mind and intellect as a result the yogi gains understanding of the elements as well as time which is nothing but the span of events against a larger perspective and space which is the perceived difference between or among things this vichara or discriminative thought process results in unwavering understanding of the interplay of the elements that facilitates the apparent difference and he goes deeper into the savichara state transcending time space and manifestations of the subtle elements 
and this state is called nirvichara where the traces of vichara or discrimination are left behind this state brings in impeccable clarity that our association and the resultant identity with the material world of multiple forms names and actions etc breeds all kinds of dualities subsequently all these dualities cease to exist as a result the yogi remains blissful and this state is called sananda ananda is bliss it can also be called ahlada this is different from sukham or happiness sukham or happiness is experience born out of sense contact it depends on favorable experiences the absence of which breeds unhappiness whereas ananda is the natural predisposition or an emanation of the character of being as such where there is neither vidarka nor vichara steadfastness or remaining constantly in this state transcending all thoughts of the self the nature unperturbed by any physical identity is called videha the etymology of videha is vigatah deha bhavah yatra here in this context yatra means where there is deha bhava means the notion of deha or the physical body and vigata means parted from or gone away collectively it means that the sananda samadhi leads to the condition where the sense of body is lost leading to the next level called sasmita going deeper from sananda samadhi the yogi moves ahead to sasmita samadhi at this state ananda or bliss ends and only asmita or the sense of i remains now there could be a question when the yogi passed through the successive levels of samadhi such as in the first savitarka to nirvitarka where the focus was on the gross material world which diminished towards the savichara to nirvichara state where the focus was on the subtle elements and then moved on to the blissful state at the end of which even the sense of the physical body is also gone therefore naturally the yogi would be in such an elevated state of consciousness then how come there be the sense of i this question is prompted by a misunderstanding between the concept of asmita and ahankara when we say asmita is the sense of i chances are there for its being misunderstood as ahankara so let us see the difference between asmita and ahankara the sanskrit definition of ahankara is yato yatra antah karanam aham ityullekhena vishayan vedayate sah ahankara in simple terms ahankara is the sense of i or the sense of doership or the sense of ownership and so on with respect to the sense perception such as i do i hear i smell i touch i see i understand i am the owner etc and the sanskrit definition of asmita is yatra andarmukhataya pratiloma parinaame prakritiline chetasi satta matram avabhati sa asmita in simple terms in asmita there is a feeling of iness in respect of the object and not merely in respect of one's own self usually we do not feel a sense of i in respect of someone else we always refer to someone else as you he she it that and the like 
but in the state of asmita objects of reference no longer remain as you he she it and so on on the other hand the yogi perceives everything as his own self otherwise all objects remain as an i those who know sanskrit can easily understand this for example we say saha asti which means he is tum asi that means you are aham asmi that means i am the state of being asmi is asmita a synonym for asmita is asmitvam like laghima or laghutvam meaning being simple or light similarly garima or gurutvam being great or heavy so asmita is nothing but self consciousness or the sense of iness in respect of everything we perceive and this is different from ahankara or the self consciousness characterized by individuality isolated personality or egoism etc there is another simple sanskrit definition for asmita ekatmika samvid asmita the sense of oneness is asmita attainment of this state by passing through successive stages is collectively known as samprajnata samadhi in short the focus of meditation shifted from the gross to the subtle and to blissfulness to a collective sense of i with regard to everything from this state the yogi moves further to a level of conscious state where there is absolutely nothing to focus on and this state is called asamprajnata samadhi let us learn it through the yoga sutra of sage patanjali in the coming episode until then please stay tuned to this channel